Picasso's Rose Period represents an important epoch in the life and work of the Spanish artist Pablo Picasso, which had a great impact on the developments of modern art. It began in 1904 at a time when Picasso settled in Montmartre at the Batolivoire among Bohemian poets and writers. Following Picasso's Blue Period which depicted themes of poverty, loneliness, and despair in somber, blue tones, Picasso's Rose Period represents more pleasant themes of clowns, harlequins and carnival performers, depicted in cheerful vivid hues of red, orange, pink and earth tones. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new to this channel, you're so much welcome to this channel where you learn interesting historical arts and cultural history. Thanks for joining us. Please like, comment your thoughts, subscribe and share our content if you're enjoying it. Based largely on intuition rather than direct observation, Picasso's Rose Period marks the beginning of the artist's stylistic experiments with primitivism, influenced by pre-Roman Iberian sculpture, oceanic and African art. This led to Picasso's African period in 1907, culminating in the proto-cubist Les Demoiselles de Vignon, regarded as a masterpiece. The Rose Period lasted from 1904 to 1906. Picasso was happy in his relationship with Fernande Olivier whom he had met in 1904 and this has been suggested as one of the possible reasons he changed his style of painting. Harlequins, circus performers and clowns appear frequently in the Rose period and populated Picasso's paintings at various stages throughout the rest of his long career. The Harlequin, a comedic character usually depicted in checkered patterned clothing, became a personal symbol for Picasso. The Rose period has been considered French-influenced, while the Blue period more Spanish-influenced, although both styles emerged while Picasso was living in Paris. Picasso's Blue period began in late 1901 following the death of his friend Carlos Casagimas and the onset of a bout of major depression. It lasted until 1904, when Picasso's psychological condition improved. The Rose period is named after Picasso's heavy use of pink tones in his works from this period, from the French word for pink, which the Rose period has been considered French-influenced, while the Blue period more Spanish-influenced although both styles emerged while Picasso was living in Paris. In the early 20th century, African artworks were being brought to Paris as a consequence of the expansion of the French Empire into sub-Saharan Africa. The press was abuzz with exaggerated stories of cannibalism and exotic tales about the African kingdom of Dahomey. The mistreatment of Africans in the Belgian Congo was exposed in Joseph Conrad's popular book Heart of Darkness. It was perhaps due to this climate that Picasso and other artists began looking towards African art for inspiration. Picasso's interest in African art was sparked partly by Henri Matisse, who showed him a wooden Congo Vili figurine. In May or June 1907, Picasso experienced a revelation while viewing African art at the Ethnographic Museum at the Palais du Trocadero. Picasso's discovery of African art influenced aspects of his painting. Picasso continued to develop a style derived from African, Egyptian, and Iberian art during the years prior to the start of the analytic cubism phase of his painting in 1910. Works of Picasso's African period include The Bust of a Woman 1907, in the National Gallery, Prague, Mother and Child Summer 1907, Musée Picasso, Paris and so many more. In historical reflection, a few issues have been pointed out including questioning the origins of this genre of art for Picasso. Primitivism as an aesthetic was often used by Europeans borrowing from non-Western cultures. 
While it is clear Picasso was inspired heavily by aesthetics from cultures not his own, many art historians and critics have argued that this sort of borrowing was a modernist expression. Art historian Cabina Mercer covers Picasso's Demoiselles de Vignon in his book on black diasporic art titled, Travel and Sea. He argues Picasso's stylistic change towards an African-inspired aesthetic was individualistic and modern, while minority artists receive little to no recognition for their work inspired by their own culture. It could also be seen as problematic that in Demoiselles de Vignon the women painted wearing African-like masks are meant to be prostitutes from Barcelona's red-light district. Picasso masks these white bodies in order to make their sexualization acceptable to a European audience. Picasso himself though said about painting it's not an aesthetic process, it's a form of magic that interposes itself between us and the hostile universe, a means of seizing power by imposing a form on our terrors as well as on our desires. To him, these masks were a people's connection between themselves and the hostile universe he wanted his art to confront. Please before we continue don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you get notified on our next upload. Don't forget to comment your thoughts too. In February 2006, an exhibition titled Picasso in Africa, showcasing Picasso's work from his African period as well as many African sculptures similar to ones he would have been inspired by were shown side by side in Johannesburg, South Africa at the Standard Bank Gallery. A curator involved in the exhibition, Marilyn Martin quoted to an article for The Guardian Picasso never copied African art which is why this show does not match a specific African work with a Picasso. The goal of the exhibition was not to accuse Picasso of stealing, but to show how he transcended it and created a new aesthetic combining his own and his inspiration.